Shout out to G-Man Boxing. Where's the piss bottle? It's over there. All right, lads and lassies. This weekend gone. Obviously, we had Joseph Parker versus Derek Chisora. Joseph Parker emerged victorious with a razor close split decision. Um, I obviously didn't watch that fight live. I had other things going on on Saturday, um, well, Friday and Saturday. But I did watch it Sunday, you know, when I got home. And it, was, it wasn't it was exactly the most entertaining fight I've seen. I felt that if anyone deserved to win, that it was a close fight. I felt that if anyone deserved to win it, it was Derek Chisora, it has to be said. Right, I don't have an issue, I'm not going to scream robbery, it, I didn't see a robbery. But my questions are moving forward for Joe Parker. What really, where is he at in terms of his position in the heavyweight division? I seem to say this oh too regularly after he has a, a fight of any significance. I said it after Junior Fa. it was a very quick turnaround into this fight. You know, it was a lot of change. Obviously, he was training in the UK. He was training with Andy Lee as opposed to Kevin Barry. It, it really looked like much of the same, if I'm honest with you, what Joseph Parker was doing in there from, from every point of view, from a mental point of view. Certain things he did well. You know, he did do certain things well, like he wrapped Derek Chisora up quite well. He was able to tire Chisora out. Um, but for the most part, it, it, it was typical Joseph Parker. It was him trying to do just enough to win without really grabbing the bull by the horn and now that's been a complaint we've had about joseph parker in all his fights uh where the opponent is of significant status now some people would say which well, is more or less a gatekeeper now yes i agree with that but he he is perceived as a threat you know if you see like shondale winters alexander flores when he fought for francois Botha right way back those people weren't threats to Joseph Parker. He was able to let his shots go. That's where we saw the fast, explosive Joseph Parker. When we see him against guys like Fa, Derek Chisora, you know, Dylan White, guys where he has a perceived threat, we kind of get a Parker who's just happy enough to nick a win. You know, he doesn't need to go in there and feel the need to really stamp his authority on these fights. He's happy to just go in, nick the win, and that's it, move swiftly on. I've spoken before about how Parker, for me, is so frustrating to watch, not because his fights don't necessarily tend to be entertaining, which they don't, that's a fair you know, criticism. But with Joseph Parker, there's a very good heavyweight there. You know, you see someone who has decent athleticism. You know, not crazy athleticism, but decent. When he's in the 230s, his foot speed is very good. You know, very fast hands, explosive, decent punching power, he does. He does it. People say he's feather fisted. I think there's decent punching power there, but he really tries to let his shots go. Decent chin. You know, he does. He, in terms of heavyweight chins, he's got one of the better, I would say. Good boxing fundamentals. So when I see Joseph Parker, I've said this before, I see a very, very good fighter. I see a fighter who, if you were to design a good heavyweight, a lot of the attributes Joseph Parker has, you would put him, like, you would put that in the heavyweight. You know, if you're designing him. So... I see a fighter with a lot of potential, but I see a fighter who in some ways lacks that killer instincts, lacks that confidence at the highest level. You can say Chisora might not be the highest level. Well, define highest level. I mean, does Parker perceive a threat from Chisora? He certainly did. And he sort certainly, from my opinion, was happy to just try and nick this fight the way he did it without really stamping his authority on it. You know, when I look at Derek Chisora versus Joseph Parker, for me, it puts Alexander Usek's performance in context. You know, Alexander Usek has been someone who's been criticised a lot at heavyweight, and I feel unjustifiably so. People have said, well, his performances at heavyweight aren't at it like they were at cruiserweight. You know, he's, you know, he didn't look great against, um, what was the guy's name, Shez Witherspoon, irrespective of the fact he was out, out of the ring a year and was coming off the back of an injury. It was his first fight at heavyweight. Then he fought Chisora in his very next fight a year later, and for my money, completely outboxed Chisora. Yes, he was a bit taken by surprise early on, but once he got over that little hump, he was fine. And he outboxed his aura, beat him more convincingly than, in my opinion, Dylan White did in both rematches, or both fights. You could say, yeah, he stopped him in the second fight. Yeah, but he was struggling in the second fight. He was behind, I think, on two of the judges' scorecards. And definitely done a better job than Joseph Parker did. So for my money, Usek, a heavyweight, he's looked better against an opponent that he can say Dylan White's fought and that Joseph Parker's fought. 
in my opinion. So that's what I got to say about that. In terms of Parker moving forward, what really can we do? What can we expect to see? What can be done? Heard the name Dylan White mentioned the rematch. Um, that first fight was very entertaining. I enjoyed that first fight. It was a great little scrap. It was a fight that I felt that Joseph Parker lost more so than Dylan White won. And I mean that in the nicest possible way. What I mean by that is, early on, if you go back and watch that fight, early on, the speed of Parker, the superior boxing skills, it was apparent for the eye to see that Parker was the more complete fighter out of the two. The headbutt went in in the second round, which did affect Joseph Parker. That, that's for definite. It definitely did. And Joseph Parker let that fight slip away from him. Dylan White had more dog in him than Joseph Parker. And only towards the end of the fight where Parker was able to summon that inner meanness, which he needed to summon early on in the fight, he was able to drop Dylan White, who was fatigued beyond hell. That fight got away from Joseph Parker. Would he do that the second time? Would he let it slip away from him? Does he have that meanness? Can he find it? Can Andy Lee bring it out? Andy Lee is very soft-spoken. He's a good trainer, in my opinion. He's very soft-spoken as Andy Lee. A part of me feels as though Joe Parker, whilst I don't write Andy Lee off as a trainer, no, definitely not, I kind of feel that Joe Parker maybe would actually be helped by having a loud figure in the corner. Someone, maybe not like Teddy Atlas, who's a drill sergeant, but someone who's really going to get him fired up. You know, I mean, I suppose if you're a calm person, you're listening to a calm voice, it kind of leads you to believe that everything is okay, everything is fine, and that you can go on the way you are. Whereas if you have someone who's really shouting urgency at you, maybe you will like that little bit of inner fire in them, just ever so slightly, to be able to go and grab the bull by the horn. People ask the question, do they see Joseph Parker, or do I see Joseph Parker win another world title? As it stands right now, no. He is still quite young, Joe Parker, lest we forget, he's not even 30 years old yet. He seems like he's been around forever, but he's not even 30 years old yet. When AJ and Fury have their fight, which I believe they will, and when they have their rematch, which I'm sure they will, you would imagine some of those some of those titles would go vacant. All right, you would imagine that if Joseph Parker decides to go down, because he's highly ranked by the WBO, but it looks like uh, Joyce and Usyk are vying for that position. If he was to fight Dylan White, I'm not sure where he's ranked the WBC. He would well, he would inherit the WBC interim title which would put him in line for a crack at the winner of AJ Fury. Now, perhaps that title goes vacant. I don't know what will happen in the future. Then, yeah, he could potentially, you know, get elevated to full champion. But in terms of him actually going out and beating one of the two main guys, I can't see it. Him against Alexander Usek, I'd be making Usek the favourite. I think that that would be an interesting fight. I think that Usek, it might, I think that Usek is the better boxer. And his extra speed, so long as he's in the two teens would seem true that fight against joe joyce i think joe joyce's jab would cause joseph parker a world of issues his physical strength would cause joe parker a world of issues and i'd be picking joe joyce to win that fight as well now against dylan white there's a lot of questions still there that was the worst alexander pavekin i ever seen who he beat we still don't know how his chin's going to be because he was never tagged by Pavekin once in that fight. Joe Parker, you would imagine, will be able to, well, he's found it before. I see no reason why he wouldn't find it again. That rematch interests me. Now, that rematch right there, although I've made this video and I've probably not been too complimentary on Joe Parker, and some people have always said, yo, gee, do you not like Joe Parker? It, I, I like Joe Parker. He seems a cool guy. You know, I'd love to meet him. He seems a cool guy. But as a fighter, he irritates me because I see such a talented fighter there that he just doesn't use his natural ability. He doesn't use what the gifts God gave him. You know, he's so, there's such a good fighter there that I just feel mentally is being held back. You know, and that's no fault of the trainer. I think that's all on Joe Parker. Whether it's confidence, whether it's meanness, it's something that's holding him back. But against Dylan White, I would pick Joseph Parker to win that rematch. I think that... The saying, those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. I would imagine that Joe Parker will definitely have learned from that first fight. And that he would come into that rematch stronger, knowing this is what I did wrong. This is where I had success. If I can do more of this and negate what I was doing wrong there, i.e. letting Dylan White bully him, I should have success. So in that sense, and I think that Dylan White, 
Dylan White would try and box with Parker, but Chisora didn't really box with Parker. Chisora just tried to overwhelm Joe Parker. He really reddened up Parker's ribcage, you know. But I don't think Dylan White's going to be as reckless as that. Dylan White can be reckless. Don't believe me, he can. He can be very reckless at times. But I don't think he'll be quite as... I mean, Chisora is all out pressure. You know, that's him. War Chisora. I think Dylan White will be a lot more circumspect. And if it's a, if it's a sheer boxing match between the two... You give Joe... Well, we've seen it. Joe Parker was the better boxer. We've seen that early on in the fight, the first fight. So those are my thoughts on this. I said I'd just make this video just to give my two cents on everything. I didn't do any post-fights. I said I was busy. Um, but that's my two cents on Joe Parker moving forward. Do I think he'll win a world title again? Uh, no. Personally, no. But I'm here to be proven wrong. I've been proven wrong several times and I'm sure I'll be proven wrong again. That's what I'm... This is my opinion, right? This is my opinion. If he proves me wrong... Fair play to the guy. But from what I've seen, I can't see it. The two fights that most interest me for Parker will be a Ruiz, uh, Andy Ruiz rematch. Can't see that happening, to be honest with you. Or Dylan White rematch. The Dylan White fight was more entertaining than the Ruiz fight. Let's make no mistakes about that. So if we see that again, happy days. People, those are my thoughts on this. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Do you think Joe Parker will be heavyweight champion again? Or do you feel as though at the highest level of the heavyweight division against guys like Usyk, um, Joshua, Chisora, or not Chisora, Joshua, Fury, Usyk, White, that Joe Parker just doesn't have it? Or do you think he can still beat some of these guys? Leave it in the comment section. Hope you liked the video. Smash the like button, lads, lads, if you did. Subscribe, of course, if you're new. We're growing every single day, which is great. Hope you are all having a great day. All, all the best to all you people. Hope you enjoyed it. Hashtag GMADS rocks, all that good stuff. Peace.